हेलो मेडिकल एंड नर्सिंग मास्टर्स सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ द यूरिनरी सिस्टम द एंड द कार्डियोवास्कुलर सिस्टम और वी कैन से इट इज अंडर द मेडिकल सर्जिकल नर्सिंग एंड पैथोलॉजी फॉर द बी एस सी नर्सिंग सेकेंड ईयर थर्ड ईयर जी एन एम सेकेंड ईयर मेडिकल सर्जिकल मास्टर्स डिग्री नॉर्थसेट एग्जाम एंड क्लेक्स आर एन एग्जाम एंड इट इज जनरली कवर्ड अंडर एवरी एग्जाम वाई वा क्वेश्चन आर बींग आस्कड अबाउट दिस टॉपिक सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अडीमा यस ऑल्सो नोन एज स्वेलिंग हाइड्रोपसी यस हाइड्रोपसी हाइड्रोपसी वी कैन से इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज हाइड्रोपसी 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 ऑल्सो कम्स अंडर दी वी कैन से जनरल अडीमा ऑल राइट बिफोर वी प्रोसीड फर्दर I would like to discuss uh, in a brief time about the distribution of water in our body. So, as we know that in a 72 kg person or a man, there is about 60 percent uh, we can say body fluid, which makes around 42 kg, 42 kg weight. and 40% is lean body mass covering the dry weight of the body so uh, in this 42 kg or 60% the fluid is further divided into that is icf which makes two third of this 42 kg or 60% that is 28 liter okay and this icf intracellular fluid present inside the cells is generally present in the muscles yes intracellular fluid uh, generally makes uh, or muscles cover up 60% of icf yes icf and ecf ecf is generally uh, one third part or generally is 14 liters all right so 14 liters both of these make 42 liters or 42 kg of body fluid further ecf is divided into that is blood plasma and is present in the, into the interstitium uh, we can say uh, or making the ecf environment in the lymphatic system that is represented here over by the green dot serous cavities like pleural cavity pleural cavity cavity around the heart that is pericardium pericardium uh, layer is also having pericardial fluid and then is the abdominal cavity so as we know there is accumulation of fluid in the pleural cavity pleuritus ascites is in the abdominal cavity and uh, that is pericardial effusion pericardial effusion in the heart so these are different kind of ecf fluid along with this our uh, ecf is also uh, covering transcellular fluid which is csf cerebrospinal fluid salivary glands making saliva over here liver and bile duct uh, fluids thyroid gland is making of gel like structure lacrimal gland and gi secretion like secretion of bile duct uh, we can say pancreatic juice gastric juice are covered under the ecf and in the ecf the major major protein is albumin ecf extracellular fluid the major plasma protein is albumin which is responsible for maintaining the osmotic pressure the solute albumin is making a magnetic power to attract fluid fluid and fluid therefore maintaining the oncotic pressure plasma colloid pressure and osmotic pressure all right so this is general discussion about the fluid distribution in the body and now as we know that uh, definition of edema covers accumulation of fluid in the intracellular fluid extracellular fluid and is also divided into general edema or local edema so first of all i would like to explain simple terms general edema also known as anasarca anasarca is 
present in the complete body for example in case of acute and chronic renal failure and a sarca may be present all over the body all right and then is the local edema local edema can occur in a local tissue due to some inflammatory reactions biting of dog by uh, injury uh, crush injury of cells and uh, biting by the mosquito etc local edema can be there all right so after that the edema is further divided into uh, following types that is intracellular type extracellular pitting and non edema pitting and non pitting edema and all these so first of all i would like to explain about intracellular edema icf intracellular fluid edema so it simply means accumulation of fluid into the cells so why the fluid is accumulating in the cells simple if the cells are retaining more uh, sodium more sodium inside it can lead to hypernatremia inside the cells and water also follow this sodium all right second reason is that is failure of sodium potassium pump failure of sodium potassium pump why this is failing because we know that in order to function sodium potassium pump or sodium potassium atp ases require oxygen so in case of hypoxia the this atp will not will no more be available and the, in the lack of atp these uh, we can say in uh, we can say pump will become dysfunctional so sodium will not be expelled out and sodium will uh, accumulate inside the cell leading to edema edema no, uh, we can say failure of sodium potassium pump which is present on cell membrane of every cell in the body all right after that if we cause a sudden injury to the cell the cell membranes of different millions of cells will break and will release sodium potassium so can cause edema cell membrane breaks and release sodium and potassium outside leading to that is edema so if in a case of a person who is taking uh, less sodium diet or uh, having kidney problem excessive use of diuretics there can be hyponatremia that is deficiency of sodium uh, uh, in the uh, that is these are cells and these cells are having extracellular environment this is extracellular environment and in this environment sodium level falls sodium level falls hyponatremia occurs so inside the cell sodium level is more therefore obvious it is quite obvious that fluid will rush into the cells fluid will rush into the cells all right causing that is icf or intracellular fluid edema so after that i would like to discuss now about extracellular we can say edema extracellular fluid edema which is accumulation of fluid in the extracellular space so the this is the uh, icf intracellular fluid this is ecf so fluid accumulate over here so why this is happening so before we discuss about ecf focus on this diagram that heart is pumping uh, um, that is the person's bp is normal 120 by 80 and blood is pumped into aorta aorta make many branches arterioles and blood reaches up to the tissue so this is a tissue uh, having cells intracellular fluid intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid so when the blood or the fluid enters into the tissue the pressure falls very much uh, and becomes minimum uh, that is 35 mm hg so in the arteries over here the pressure becomes 35 mm hg 35 mm hg all over the body all right and as the fluid enter it leaves the uh, permeable walls of the blood vessel to reach the cells the fluid will reach up to the cells so if more fluid is coming the more fluid will accumulate over here leading to ecf it is simple as that and if then uh, when the fluid comes out it uh, we can say maintain uh, we can say pressure over here environment over here and return back and return back into the venous supply 
if a venous blockage is there veins all over the body are not returning the blood to the inferior vena cava superior vena cava venules it can lead to accumulation of fluid in the extracellular space or ecf edema can occur we also had studied in the anatomy and physiology that there is a lymph drainage system present all over the body except central nervous system so the if we can we can say if there is a blockage of lymphatic system it can also lead to that is accumulation of fluid in the extracellular space we can say lymphadenopathy uh, that is cancer of lymph nodes uh, we can say cancer of uh, lymph vessels uh, epithelial cells is there it can cause accumulation then is the we can say increase in the hydrostatic pressure pressure from the blood increases and becomes more than 35 it can rush the fluid outside leading to ecf edema and also if there is a sodium retention in the extracellular space uh, if the sodium is accumulating in the extracellular space it can cause extracellular fluid edema if there is a damage of permeability this is blood vessel and there is the, uh, these are the endothelial cells and if these endothelial cells get damaged it will increase their permeability and more fluid will rush out into the extracellular space extracellular space increased permeability then is protein urea yes as i had already told that albumin is responsible for we can say magnetic effect on the water it retains water inside the blood plasma if there is any disorder like nephrotic syndrome which is marked by loss of albumin in the uh, we can say urine in the urine excessive albumin is being lost in the urine leading to nephrotic syndrome nephritic syndrome or any glomerular disease it can cause loss of albumin so water will not be able to retain over here and come out of the capillaries inside the extracellular environment so this is the uh, per, uh, increased permeability increased protein urea lymph drainage is obstructed increased hydrostatic pressure and venous blockage so in case uh, there is any venous blockage is there the fluid will also accumulate over and again into the that is extracellular space all right so we had discussed about ecf icf both now i would i will focus on pitting and non pitting in pitting edema there is a pit like structure when the arm or limbs the lower limbs of the patient are being pressed with the thumb it makes a pit like structure but why this pit is being formed because in this type of edema in the extra cellular space there is only accumulation of fluid no proteins are being lost no proteins are being present in this fluid this fluid or this type of edema is known as pitting edema but if uh, pit is not being made pit is not being formed and it is being felt hard it is known as non pitting why non pitting because plasma proteins are accumulating over here in the extra cellular space making it hard and is there is no pit at all all right non pitting and pitting edema clear all right so then comes the another type renal edema which occurs due to nephrotic syndrome nephritic syndrome glomerular disease leading to loss of albumin and there is we can say activation of rwas renin angiotensin aldosterone system excessive aldosterone more water retention more we can say sodium retention and water increasing the bp and that is edema all right then is cardiac so now focus on this part the venous return in case of any venous obstruction when the blood is being returned back to the venous drainage if it is being obstructed for example the right ventricle is not pumping properly it is having uh, we can say congestive heart failure on the right side so all this blood or fluid will exert pressure backward leading to edema leading to edema due to cardiac congestion 
Similarly, if the right, uh, left ventricle is not pumping properly, it can, uh, it will not push the blood forward. It will not push the fluid forward because of low pressure system. It can also cause to edema. So congestive cardiac failure is of prime important factor which can cause edema. Then pulmonary edema. So if we talk about the, uh, we can say uh, alveoli. Around the alveoli, we know that there is pulmonary vasculature there is pulmonary artery and after that it becomes a pulmonary vein after that it becomes pulmonary vein so if a fluid is returning back it will leak out into the pulmonary spaces or in the cells of the lungs or in the parenchyma of the of the uh, we can say lungs leading to pulmonary edema all right cerebral edema as i had already told that there is no such system in the central nervous system to drain out the extra fluid there are no lymphatic drainage system so it is all dependent upon blood brain barrier and it is a quite serious matter which can lead to death so these were the types of the that is we can say edema that are being explained over here in a short brief period but the question arises for example a brilliant student might be thinking that when all of a sudden i and you uh, get rid of uh, we can say rise from the bed and start running we just suddenly jump off from the bed but our legs and arms don't develop edema why is this so the answer is that in the extracellular environment, in the extracellular environment, there are present glyco, glycoprotein, yes please, glycoprotein brush piles. These are special uh, type of proteins which can hold water. That is the reason all of a sudden if I rise from the bed, uh, stand like this, arms like this, water is not being drained uh, downward because of these proteins. But when the hydrostatic pressure is more, it can cause breakdown of these proteins which are present in the extracellular fluid. Okay, so which can cause edema. Edema. All right. So till now we had discussed so many things. And in the uh, end, I would like to explain that uh, sodium retention and water retention can also cause edema. Can also cause edema. So uh, if these yes i forgot to tell you that if these glycoproteins brush like piles are broken down and edema occurs it is due to gravity because i am standing arms are like this soldiers are standing and in the we can say 15 hour flight in the air uh, in the aeroplane so students sitting for a long time the uh, or patient is lying on the bed he or she may develop cerebral or lumbar edema in the pelvic area uh, under the shoulders and if we are standing the gravity will pull the water downward so it is dependent upon the gravity therefore it is also known as dependent edema note this word dependent edema all right so uh, in the end i would like to tell you that there are some medications like dextrose dextrose can easily penetrate having glucose easily penetrate the blood vessels extracellular environment and then can enter into the intracellular environment so dextrose can cause all three type of edema vascular edema ecf edema icf edema that is why it is not used for hemorrhagic shock then what is preferred plasma proteins like albumin because albumin will maintain the osmotic pressure and will attract more water back into the circulation in the shock there is a low bp and we are ha we have to maintain the fluid balance of the blood and not about the ecf so plasma proteins are being preferred over the dextrose so all this was about the edema topic i uh, hope this might have uh, proven useful for all of you kindly share this video with all your classmates juniors and seniors teachers and with your classmates thank you for watching this video keep subscribing and don't forget to press the subscribe button and the like button thank you once again